Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This is Eisenetz and today I have the fourth part in my mini-series about brewing for CDH. Last time I've discussed how to properly test new cards for your deck, so now we can focus on meta calls and trade-offs. So without further ado, let's get started. One thing you have to realize when you brew a deck for CDH is that you are never really finished. While the core of the deck might stay the same for a long time, there are plenty of cards that will go in and out of the deck over time. Sometimes it's because new cards get printed that are straight upgrades to cards you already play. This is rare, but it happens like when the channel lands were printed and replaced some of the basic lands in people's lists. More often though, cards get swapped around because the meta shifts. What does that mean? While the greater meta in CDH is at a very nice equilibrium right now, it usually shifts from turbo to stacks, from stacks to midrange, from midrange to turbo, and so on. This means that you will be facing different strategies that force you to play different cards to be able to deal with your opponents more optimally. Let's go through a few examples. In a turbo meta you will see a lot of decks that are capable of winning on turn 2 to 3. So in order to optimize your deck for this meta you will need to play cheap early interaction like miscast and spell pierce. Or you want cheap early stacks effects like deafening silence and thalia. These cards will allow you to stop early win attempts and make it basically impossible to perform storm based wins. In mid-range matters, you will see much more decks that seek to deploy an engine that consists of multiple cards and usually has one core card to function properly. These engines need to be removed efficiently so that you won't be overwhelmed by your opponent's huge board presence or card advantage. In order to deal with that, you will need to slot more soft and hard removal as well as hard counter spells and very specific hate pieces. Soft counter spells and stacks pieces won't do the trick here because the mid-range player can assemble their engine over multiple turns and when it's finally assembled you will have a hard time getting rid of it. So cards like Pithing Needle, Resculpt, Abrade, Assassin's Trophy, etc. pull far more weight in this kind of meta than they do in a turbo meta. In a stacks meta you will see decks that slow down the game immensely and hate on the most prevalent combos with effects like Rule of Law. In order to optimize your deck against a stacks meta you will need two things. First, you want some way to generate value through your opponent's stacks, so any value engine that fits your deck can be of great help to accumulate card and board advantage over a dragged out game. Secondly, you want a way to combo off while facing common stacks pieces. Some combos work through stacks, like Grim Monolith plus Power Artifact can make infinite mana in the presence of Rule of Law, while Isochron Scepter plus Dramatic Reversal can't. Alternatively, you can add more big removal spells that can get rid of multiple hate pieces in instant speed. Cards like March of Smirling Mists, Dress Down, Toxic Deluge, Fire Covenant and obviously Cyclonic Rift are of great help here to get rid of an overwhelming board presence and allow you to combo off. Single targeted removal however will not do a lot because you are wasting resources to get rid of stacks pieces one by one while your opponents profit off of your removal spells. As you can see from these examples, no card can be assessed in a vacuum and especially interaction and removal are highly meta dependent. Since we are limited to 100 card deck, we can't just jam everything in, so we need to make an informed decision on which card to slot and because of that there's always, always, always a trade-off. If you play more single target removal, you won't be able to deal with bigger bot presences. If you play an additional counter spell, you will have one less slot for removal. If you add a specific hate piece against a common mid-range strategy, you will have one less slot for general interaction and so on. These trade-offs are an inherent part of brewing for different metas and also the reason for a lot of debates in the community. One player might add this card, the next player might add that card and they will argue which one is the most optimal choice. But in reality there is no such thing as the most optimal choice when assessing meta choices. Finally, what we consider to be the general meta isn't really a thing for a lot of people. For most people it's just their local meta or the meta in their respective discord communities. That's why one player thinks adding more removal is necessary to optimize the deck, while the next player needs to slot another counter spell or a card draw engine. The local meta choices are also where cards like Verity Circle or Compost absolutely shine. These are cards that see little to no play in deck lists that are brewed to be competitive in a general meta or in blind pots, but can pull tons of weight in your local meta. So if you want to optimize your deck for the general or your local meta, Analyze what strategies see a lot of play and make a decision based on that. Slot whatever allows you to deal with your opponent better and accept that there will always be a trade-off. And no two lists can be identical and at the same time optimal for their respective local matters. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to like, share, subscribe and comment. Hop over to my Discord server if you want to play some games. And if you want to support this channel even more, you can find a link to my Patreon page down below. This is Eisenetz and Auf Wiedersehen.